So from the previous um, um, presentation, we do know that our food choices can impact our mental health. So whether we're choosing those nutrient poor foods, which can have like poor mental health associations, maybe higher rates of depression, more feelings of sadness, more lethargy, or we choose nutrient rich foods, which tend to give us more energy, um, help us feel better, have more positive emotions. We know there is some link that's linked between what we eat and what's going on in our minds and our overall emotions. We also know that our senses can also impact our mental health. So for example, you know, we have sight. If you think about our visual surroundings. So compare being in a messy workspace versus an organized workspace. When you're in a messy situation, you tend to feel a little bit more anxiety, um, more frustrated, more, a little bit more disorganized compared to when you're in an organized space. You tend to be more productive, a little bit more happier. Vibrant colors tend to be able to boost positivity, um, while dull colors make you feel a bit more anxious. Just seeing a smile from a stranger, for example, can also help to enhance your energy and mood. With smell, we know pleasant scents can help to reduce our stress, our anxiety, promote more relaxation and sleep. And there's a whole world of aromatherapy that really says that you know, different scents can really affect our, our mood and different things we're doing throughout the day. We know we have sound. Sound helps to influence our emotional state. Loud noises tend to be very jarring, very starting, very frustrating, very anxiety provoking. While soft music is more so used to be more calming. Um, sometimes we sleep to certain music, so it helps us relax a little bit. And music that we listen to during workouts, we tend to listen to boost energy, energy boosting kind of music. Touch is a crucial one. Some people, physical touch is their love language. And without that touch, it can have some mental health consequences. We have this idea of touch deprivation or touch starvation, which people tend to have more depressive episodes when they're not around other human beings. The warmth of the sun, a warm shower, all these things can elevate mood significantly. And then lastly, taste. As I think it's, well, it's, I think it's pretty much known, when we taste something good, we tend to enjoy it. I don't know about you guys might have something good to taste. I do a little happy dance, because yeah, it tastes really good. Versus when it's something bad, we tend to not really be happy after that meal, and it could have a negative impact on our day. So this brings me back to the question at hand is, can the sensory properties of food actually affect our mental health? So is there some type of pathway that we can pinpoint? Um, is there a way that we can create certain foods or we can um, create guidelines for people to, to maybe eat certain foods or chew certain foods because of what else are our senses and can it improve our mental health? So as someone from the taste field and also somebody from Monell, um, taste and smell are some of the senses that are more of more importance to me and I have more, a little bit more knowledge in them. So I am going to focus on taste and smell um, for the remaining of this presentation, but also because we really know it's taste and smell is what creates the flavor and flavor is what is actually driving those food choices. So this is how we choose our food because of the flavor, um, how it tastes, how it smells. And if we have any impairments in one or the other, we're really not good flavor people. So what do we know about taste and smell when it comes to our emotions? So we go back to this concept of sweet taste. When it comes to something sweet, it's always associated with this feeling of pleasantness, this feeling of niceness, this feeling of like enjoyment. Versus something like bitter, for example, tends to be more associated with feelings of anger, feelings of disgust. Um, I like to give an example when I speak about bitter is when I'm out in the field and I'm working with young students and I'm introducing them to this world of taste and smell. We have this experiment we do then where we give them a piece of PTC paper, and for those who've had PTC or haven't had PTC, and if you can actually taste it, not all of us can, um, it's a very, very bitter taste. And I watch their faces while they're tasting it, and their faces go from very enthusiastic to this disgust. And it's like, I'm the worst person in the world, and I betrayed their trust, and they're very angry at me, and they don't like it. And I give them a jelly bean, and they're happy again, because you know, sweet makes you happy. But we do see that anyone who likes bitter tends to not, anyone who doesn't like has bitter tends to not really be happy. While salty or sour, we have mixed emotions coming from those taste scents. Um, that's more so dependent on if you prefer, whether you're a salty liker or a sour liker, that's where it can depend how you feel after tasting um, those foods. With smell, we have a little bit different. So we know this, the smells of vanilla, lavender tend to have some more romantic and some more warm emotions come from it. We also have this concept of olfactory memories of different smells eliciting certain emotions. So in one study, um, they looked at olfactory memories and they compared those who had memories of fruits and vegetables and a couple other sweet things, and they found that, that elicited more, more positive emotion in them versus them when they had memories of these burnt and deteriorated foods, they didn't react very well to those. And this was regardless of what the situation was at hand. It was just so having that, that olfactory memory of remembering those smells was able to elicit those type of emotions. 
Still, I really thought something was missing as I'm on this journey. While the evidence of emotion is kind of limited, and I really was finding it in one direction. You're choosing the food, and then you're having the emotion. And it's really necessary for us to kind of explore this a different way and think about how can these sensory attributes of food really influence our food choices, and then maybe secondarily, we can look at the effects of mood, emotions, and mental behaviors. So that kind of got me to kind of focus a little bit more on food behaviors. And we know there's a lot in literature that the sensory properties of food can influence our food behaviors, and then maybe our food behaviors, so the foods that we're actually choosing, are what's gonna impact our overall mental health.